Hello, I am Max, and you're watching Cool Stuff and Weird Cars, where I'm AS. I'm using my phone to record audio because I can't find a better microphone s- situation at the, be- at the moment. So today, we're going to talk about this car, a car that I haven't talked about in a while. This is my 1989 Chrysler TC by Maserati. It has the 2.2 liter turbo, four-cylinder engine, 16-valve, five-speed manual transmission, one of 500 made, and it's a little bit worse for wear, as you've seen in the previous videos I've made of it. So, in this video, I'm going to basically go over everything that needs to be done to this car again. It's been a while since I've done that, and uh, some things have changed very slightly. And I need to get this car ready for July, because there's a high chance I'm using that to take this to Radwood, Seattle. So, you gotta get it done before then, and I gotta have it running at least okay by then. So, let's get started with everything that needs to be done. So here is the reason that this car is so rare and the reason I have it for the most part and there's some sort of oil question mark that's all over everything. I don't know what that is. It's all over the timing belt and over the uh, thermostat housing here. Don't know what that is. But this is the 2.2 liter 16 valve turbo engine. It makes about 200 horsepower. Uh, it was most powerful 2.2 turbo made up to this point. Only pre- or only outdone by the Spirit RT and the Dodge Daytona with the 16-valve Lotus head engine. It's a Cowsworth head, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'll talk more about it in a review I eventually make of this car whenever it finally runs right. But this is where all the problems lie. Well, most of the problems for this car. Uh, it runs and drives okay. Um, it's just, and it idles perfectly fine, as I'll show later in this video when I start it. Um, but the problems I'm having is once you get into any kind of boost at all with the turbo, it just runs like crap. So there's one of three things going on that I've been able to figure out. Um, either the vacuum lines have completely just eroded and something's not getting the right thing and it's running in limp mode, which is very possible. Uh, that was my first guess of what's going on. Or it's not getting a spark from these awful spark plug wires that are on top of here um, because somebody tried to fix the spark plug wires without actually replacing them and there's big chunks of extra spark plug wire in there for whatever reason uh, which is very possible third option uh too much fuel delivery that's why it's running i think it's running rich from what i've seen because it just backfires like crazy and makes the turbo or makes the exhaust glow red if you drive it down the road at all i'm going to basically take apart the entire front part of this engine uh, take off the intake manifold and all that because you have to to get to the fuel injectors and all of the stuff like even to replace the spark wires you have to get underneath this right here and it's no fun so i have to do that basically i'm gonna have to take off the thermostat take off the uh intake manifold and take off you know the radiator and all that stuff again to get this going and there's hair going in my mouth because this is what happens whenever you have long hair so the, th- the plan is for right now is basically just give this thing the best tune-up I possibly can. Um, spark plug wires, spark plugs. I've already done with spark plugs, but I'll replace them again probably. Um, go through the entire fuel system, clean it out. Because uh, I've already done everything from basically from the engine back. Uh, I've even put in new fuel lines up here. So all I have to do really is get the injectors out, clean that stuff up, and it should be fairly okay. Um, another big thing, timing belt. Uh, it's very frayed on one side. Need to replace that ASAP. Uh, that's something I actually have to replace. And I can't really go on without having that. That's pretty much it for the car running. Um, I'm going to go through and probably just... I know you can do like a vacuum block kind of thing for these 2.2 turbos where you don't have to actually use all of the vacuum crap that's in here. You just have a single like block of some sort and it supplies all the vacuum that you need for the car. Um, I need to research more on how to do that and whatnot, but I think I'll do that instead of just trying to redo all of the factory stuff because it's a lot easier and I don't really care about keeping everything factory and keeping all the emissions crap uh, that it used to have. And really other than that, uh, the car is pretty much fine. The interior needs to be put back together because I took it apart to try and take, uh, try and access the 
wiring for the fuel pump, which was not actually the problem for the fuel pump. And I need to work on a little bit of wiring stuff back there too. Still, that is kind of iffy. Um, I'll check out the interior real quick. So for the most part, the interior is in fairly good condition. Everything's pretty much here. Uh, the door panels are perfectly fine. I do have this piece down here for the sill that I need to replay or put back in. Um, there's a few little odds and ends I need, like the gas cap release, plastic thing. Uh, I need to replace the speakers because somebody tried to replace them back in the day and did it awfully. As you can tell by the wiring that's going through here. Um, the biggest thing with the interior, well, I need something to put here. Don't really know what I'm going to put there. Because uh, they used to have a CD player, apparently. Um, it's got the dash, is a little warped because it's leather and it sat for 20 years. Uh, the biggest problem, as you can see, I actually have the trim back here. Uh, there's supposed to be a spot to put the spare tire back here, like a storage compartment. And I still have it, but the problem is, is that I haven't had time to put it back in yet. So, I gotta do that. I'm gonna replace all the speakers because they're all blown out. Um, I'm gonna do that before putting that back in, so this is basically secondary. If I don't get this back in by the time I want to take this somewhere, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, but hopefully I do. And so on and so forth. Mirror obviously has to be reattached and I have to figure out why this thing right here, which is a connector for the, uh, a, uh, a hold down for the top will not latch. Uh, probably just needs to be adjusted or something, but I need to figure that out before trying to take it anywhere, especially on like a highway or something where I'm going to possibly lose the top. I don't want to lose the top. And so since I pretty much talked about everything that I need to do necessarily, We'll go ahead and start it up because I haven't actually done so in quite a while. Battery still has a little bit of power because it sparked a little bit. Put those on there nice and tight. It's going to be loud and I'm not going to be able to talk over it. So uh, if you don't hear from me again, thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see if this thing will even start. I don't know if it has any battery power at all. Oh, it's got some this up a little bit. It's got something. Oh, fan's on. Forget the last time I started this, I was using the heat. Let the ABS pump do its thing. I have no clue if this will start or not, because it's been probably a few, probably a month since I've started this thing, if not more. I don't think I've started it actually since I got the RAM. I'll let it run for a few minutes and let the battery get charged back up again. Hopefully, if it will start. I do need to get a proper battery for it too, because the battery I have is not correct and also I don't really have any tie downs for it. All right, let's go. Oh, come on. It runs still. Oh yeah, I need, to put, I need to put the exhaust back on. So it looks like I'm going straight from making that video to actually fixing the exhaust. Hopefully. Well, fixing it isn't giving it a temporary fix. Alright, so the exhaust is attached, kind of. Uh, I've tied it together so no matter what it won't fall off. It'll probably still be loud, but let's see if I can make it to the garage. I'm sure I can. I need to stop and get gas first because it is almost out of gas. Um, but here we go. Let's see if it's any quieter. Because uh, the fix I had didn't really work all as well as I was expecting. Yeah, it's so loud. Oh well. And there we go. The car is finally, finally in the garage. The place that it's supposed to be going to for the past five months now, six months. But it's finally over here. We can finally get working on it without having to deal with doing it outside in awful weather. And there we go. Made it over here perfectly fine, the exhaust did fall off again, so I'm gonna have to actually fix it, but I can actually do that now, as long as I have the tools to do so. I'm gonna have to put the windows down because I'm sure it's at least a little bit wet in here. So I'm gonna let it dry out a little bit. I need this, because this is a piece of my Lexus. 
believe it or not. This is whenever I hit the deer, if you remember, I hit a deer when I was driving to Ohio. And this piece got slightly ripped off uh, because of running over the deer. Uh, not really running into the deer, running over it specifically. And uh, when I was driving it through six inches of snow, that, that car, uh, this just kind of came completely off. So I just have to reattach it, get some clips, you know, simple stuff, and we'll go on from there. But I believe that will conclude this video as soon as I find somewhere to put this piece of plastic. As long as all goes well, I will be making videos of working on this thing as soon as possible. We'll start getting disassembled. Basically just gotta take off everything in the front here and go on from there. So, for now, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the return of the Chrysler TC by Maserati. And uh, for now, I'm out of here. See ya.